Hey guys, I am going to show you how to enter all of the data into your TI Inspire graphing calculator and also how to calculate and create residual plots um, and plot them, your residuals against both X and Y hat if we really wanted to and to re review how to find your least squares regression line. So all I've done is I've gone to a list and spreadsheets page and I've entered my data. Remember, you have to title each column. Um, for this data, it was age and the success of knee surgery, that post-surgical range of motion that we referenced in the video for the content for this lesson. So I've entered all of the ages for my patients and their associated range of motion. Now, before we can do a residual plot, we actually have to calculate the residuals. And remember, a residual is an error. It is each actual y minus each predicted y, which is called y hat. So my calculator will actually calculate the residuals for me, but first I have to calculate a line of best fit or an LSRL to get generate the y hat values so that my calculator will do the residuals. So I think the easiest way to do that is just to add a page. So I'm gonna go to control doc and I'm gonna add a normal calculator page. Once there, we click on Menu. Remember, this class is Statistics, and we would like to do a stat calculation for linear regression A plus BX. When we do that, these are drop-down menus. We tell our calculator that our X values come from the list I called X, and our Y values come from the list I called Y, and then we're done. We can tab all the way down, or we can just click OK with our mouse. There's my regression equation, there's my y-intercept, there's my slope, this is my coefficient of determination or r-squared value that we talked about in our last lesson in decimal form, so that would be 30.6 for r-squared. This is our r-value, and if you notice, there's this line that says resid. Those are the residuals that my calculator has actually calculated. When we do regression, our calculator takes each y actual minus the y hat predicted and creates a list of residuals. If you ever need to see those, I'll show you how to get to them. So now what we could do is we could actually create our residual plot. So we're going to add a new page for data and statistics. We're going to click to add our variable. We're going to plot x. And if you notice, now your calculator has a number of different variables that you didn't actually create. It's because these are variables that were calculated in doing the regression equation. And so if you notice, there's stat.resid, that's our residual values. And so our calculator, we can look at a scatter plot here of our residual values, and we can see that there is no pattern in the residual plot. When there's no pattern in the residual plot, it tells us that a linear relationship is appropriate. So in this case, the linear relationship between age and range of motion is appropriate. Now, if we go back to our normal calculator screen, if you ever need to see what those residual values are, you can simply type in the name of that variable, stat.resid. So we should, oops, uh, stat.resid. And when you click enter, your calculator actually gives you, and you can go an arrow up and arrow through them, these are every residual value for all of my X inputs in the order that they appear in that list and spreadsheet if you ever need to know any of them individually. The other thing that you can do on your data and statistics page, if you hover or click on any of those points, if you hover over them, Remember, these are X comma residual points. So each of those residual values is shown for every input value of X. A large portion of our last lesson was also dedicated to calculating and interpreting our R squared value or our coefficient of determination. We've actually already got that. Our R squared value is 0 0.306. To interpret that, we actually write it as a percent so that would be 30.6%. Remember, that means that approximately our per squared percent, so 30.6% of the variation in our range of motion results or the variability in the outcomes of this surgery can be explained by the relationship between a person's age and their post-surgical range of motion. All right, the other thing that we talked about, let's just go to a scatter plot of our original data. 
and we're going to look at a scatter plot of x and a scatter plot of y. If we look at our original data, if there's any point that fars, f falls far away from the overall pattern in terms of x and y, or y I should say, that would be an outlier. If we remove a point and it greatly impacts the least squares regression line, if we calculated a new y hat equation and the slope is significantly different, that would show that our point is influential. We're actually going to talk about outliers and influential points in the following class. If you have any questions on how to calculate your R squared coefficient of determination or your R value or residual plots, reach out to us. Thanks and have a great day.